Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty interesting little mini PC that I recently picked up from Lenovo's website. Now this is actually known as the Lenovo ThinkCenter M90N IoT version. It's definitely an odd one, but it caught my eye. It's fanless, completely silent, and low power. They actually make a few different configurations, but the one I picked up here was the lowest end configuration they had on their website and I paid $144 for it after tax. Now I figured I was only going to get the unit itself and a power supply, but they actually sent over a few extra accessories, like a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter, and even a USB mouse and keyboard. I was actually pretty surprised. For $144, I pretty much got the full package here. Now it does come with a 65 watt power supply, and this is definitely not the top of the line configuration because I wanted to keep it as cheap as possible, but it's actually using a CPU that I've never had a chance to test on my channel. It's using the Intel Celeron 4205U. It's a Whiskey Lake processor, not Gemini Lake, and it was released in early 2019. It's definitely a strange looking mini PC, but it's a full desktop PC. The top here is all aluminum to keep everything cool. We have two serial ports on the front. We also have USB Type-C and two USB 2.0 ports, plus a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Around back, we have our power input, full-size display port, another USB 2.0 port, another Type-C port, and Gigabit Ethernet. I mean, this thing actually weighs quite a bit because it's full aluminum, but I'm going to go ahead and pull the bottom off and just see what kind of upgradability we have with this unit. There's two screws, and the bottom should slide right off. Go ahead and pull this off, and here's a quick look at the internals. We will get a closer look in just a second, but we do have a couple upgrade options here. So the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card isn't soldered to the board, so you can replace this down the road. This particular model has a single 128GB M.2 SSD, but there's another M.2 slot here, so we can add another SSD, and on their website they claim that these can go up to 512GB, bringing it up to a total of 1TB in this mini PC. And the other thing that's mentioned is an add-on 4G card. Now this does have a spot for the SIM card and the 4G add-on card, but it's not installed right out of the box. You could add 4G connectivity to this if you want to. So like I said, this is the lowest end model that they offer, and the specs are as such. We have the ThinkCenter M90N IoT. The CPU is the Intel Celeron 4205U. This is a dual core CPU at 1.8 gigahertz. The GPU is the built-in Intel UHD 610 at 900 megahertz, and this does outperform the GPU that's built into the J4105 or the J4125. That uses the UHD 600. This has the 610. Four gigabytes of LPDDR4 soldered to the board at 2133 megahertz, 128 gigabyte M.2 SSD, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, gigabit Ethernet, and it's running Windows 10 64-bit, fully activated, right out of the box. As the name of the unit suggests, this is the IoT, or the Internet of Things version. It really wasn't meant to be a full-fledged desktop, but that's not going to stop me from testing it out. Because if this does perform well, with everything this came with, at $144, it might be well worth picking one of these up as a secondary machine. Alright, so here it is. Like I mentioned, I was a little upset that this wasn't a threaded CPU, and we're only at 1.8 gigahertz. Initially going into this, I actually should have done a little more research. I thought we'd have a boost at least up to 2.3, like a lot of these little Celeron CPUs do, but we're stuck at 1.8. We got that 4 gigs of RAM, it's soldered to the board at 2133 megahertz, and the GPU is a little higher end than the J4105 or the J4125. We're actually using the UHD 610 graphics instead of the 600. So picking one of these up, I mean, you're not going to be using it for AAA gaming, given the specs on it. But something like this for a desktop should work out for most people. Uh, first thing I want to do is just head over to Lenovo. Just get an idea of how fast everything loads up on this little CPU. And this is a very overbloated site in my opinion, but uh, yeah, as you can see, images are loading in, and as soon as everything's cached out, I mean, it's pretty quick, and it's not that bad to load in either. So if you do want to do some web browsing on this, it's totally possible. Let's head over to the Raspberry Pi website real quick, uh, right here. And yeah. So web browsing on this little Lenovo should be no trouble for most people. Next thing I want to test here is some 4K video playback. And I'm not sure how well it's going to do with 4K, but I'm sure this will do 1080p quite well. So I'm going to skip ahead here. We got it paused. 
we'll go to 4K, Stats for Nerds, full screen it. I'm going to give it a second to buffer out a bit, and we'll see what happens. So up here we have our drop frames, and it's not dropping as many as I thought it would, actually. As you can see, we are getting some, but uh, if we didn't have this counter on, you really wouldn't notice it. So yeah, I mean, this is actually handling 4K streaming way better than I thought it would. Actually pretty surprised here. I figured we'd be up to at least 200 drop frames by now, but uh, 30 out of 2,000 ain't bad. Skip ahead a bit more. Just give it a second here. Kind of impressed. So 4K streaming from sites like YouTube, as you see here, Netflix, HBO, Amazon Prime should be pretty decent here. I mean, you will get some drop frames as we saw with this YouTube video, but it is playable and it won't be noticeable to the naked eye. But let's check out some streaming from Plex. All right, so here we are with Plex. Let's go with this one here. 4K, 60 FPS, 78 megabits per second. And we'll just resume right here. It's actually working really well. So yeah, I mean, 4K video playback on this little device is possible. Now it is advertised as a 4K chip. I mean, they advertise that you can do 4K video, but I personally didn't expect it to work this well. So now that we got web browsing and video playback out of the way, let's move over to a little bit of light gaming. All right, so here we have the Windows version of Minecraft. Uh, seems to be working pretty well. I do have it set to 20 chunks. I went down to 8 and I just couldn't load in as much. And I thought we wouldn't get great performance at 20 chunks, but as you can see, we're sitting at 60. It's definitely playable, but then again, this is a very well optimized game. And uh, as you can see, it does work very well on low-end chips like the Celeron we're using right here. So Minecraft is a game that can be played on this little PC with no problem at all. Here's another Microsoft Store game. I usually don't test this on Windows. It's more of an Android game in my opinion. But since this is such a low-end chip, I figured we'd go ahead and throw it in. And while we're not at 60, it'd be really hard to tell that you weren't at 60 if we didn't have that frame counter on. So I'd say Asphalt 9 is playable. Here's World of Warcraft 720p, low settings. I will have to admit that I don't play this game and I'm sure that we will get some dips when there's lots of effects on screen, but so far it has been running at 60 on this little chip. And finally, we have Overwatch. Now, it's actually performing better than I thought it would. I wouldn't say this is a really enjoyable experience, and it really comes down to the lack of RAM. Since we're only working with 4 gigs of RAM here, it has to allocate RAM for the video memory, and uh, we are pretty much running out here. But given that this is a low-end 1.8 gigahertz dual-core chip, I was pretty surprised to see we're getting an average of around 32 FPS. 720p, low settings. Next thing I wanted to test was some emulation. Now, 3DS, Wii U, and PS3 is definitely out of the question on this, but when it comes to lower-end stuff like N64, Dreamcast, and PSP, it actually performs really well. This is the ReDream emulator. I'm upscaled to 1280 by 960. As you can see, the FPS is up in the top left-hand corner, and this is Dead or Alive 2. And in my experience, this is one of the harder ones to emulate with the ReDream emulator, and as you can see, we're running at 60. Next up, we have PSP. Chains of Olympus, 2x resolution, no frame skip, OpenGL. Every once in a while you will see it dip down, and I did go through and I tested DirectX 11 and Vulkan, but it seemed that OpenGL actually performed much better with this game. And I actually wasn't expecting it to run this well, given that this is a lower-end dual-core Intel chip, but in my opinion, this is playable. And the final thing I wanted to test here was some GameCube emulation using Dolphin. Now going into this, I knew it would be a stretch to run these games at full speed, but it's trying its hardest and it's getting really close with Soul Calibur 2, which is about a mid-range game. 
Now if you wanted to do something like Wind Waker on here, I'm sure it would run at full speed, but when it comes to harder to run games like F-Zero and Automodelista, it's pretty much out of the question. But yeah, I mean, there are some GameCube games that will run at full speed on this unit. So in the end, it's definitely not a high performance machine, but the price really doesn't reflect that. At $144, I really do think this would be worth picking up as a secondary PC. When you compare this to prices of single board computers nowadays, um, they're getting on up there and they're using ARM chips with a lot of them having lack of support for Windows or even really good Linux drivers. And that's another thing that I'd actually like to test on this little machine. I could definitely install any version of Linux as long as it supports an x86 CPU and I think we'd get really good performance. But as it sits right now as a Windows machine, I really do think it's worth $144. Now the other thing to take in consideration is they also have an i3 version. It's an 8th gen i3 CPU with a boost up to 3.9 gigahertz, and that's going for 219. Not to mention eBay prices. This was directly from Lenovo. You might be able to find these a little cheaper on eBay. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.